Amen. Happy feast day, Sprachikum. The gaze we heard in the Shoparian is the beginning of our salvation. The announcement of our salvation has taken place. We were discussing last night, some of us, how on the icon, at least in English, perhaps it's unfortunate what we call this feast in English, the Annunciation, because it doesn't really have the impact of the Greek or the Russian at all. Because an announcement can be virtually about anything. We make an announcement about the times of the services this week, about what's for coffee hour, anything like that. But in Greek, it's evangelismos, which is the evangelization of the Virgin. The good news being proclaimed to the Virgin, the gospel being proclaimed to the Virgin, far more impactful than Annunciation. Blagoves in Slavonic and Russian. And so this is a much more power-packed word. It wasn't just any message that this angel brought to her. Of course, an angel bringing you any message is a big deal. But this one is that the Son of God is going to be born from your womb. You have found favor with God. Very few people have ever been told that in history. Blessed art thou among women. She's the only one I know that's been told that. And this is an amazing thing. Because her word, in response to this, yes, she wondered how this was possible, that she, because she did not know a man, it didn't make sense, but... Unlike people today who are critical of everything and consider themselves sophisticated, she could simply accept when the angel said, The Holy Spirit shall come upon you, the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. She could accept these words. It's a beautiful thing in of itself. She had acceptance and purity of soul to be able to accept these words. And she said, Be it unto me according to thy word, that yes that she gave was a nothing more than a yes, but nothing less than a yes either. And that means something because the amens that we give so frequently, the yes that we give so frequently, isn't quite as power packed. We intend them to be sometimes. But we have to realize, I heard a Greek bishop say about this, that we don't have the money in the bank. We have insufficient funds to make that statement to the Lord. She had sufficient funds. She had the virtues. She had humility, she had love, she had meekness, she had true faith. She was able to say that yes, and that yes actually meant something. It meant everything because her word was yes and yes, and not no and no, it meant everything. It was in fact what she intended to do. So it's like when we come to confession, or when we come and make a promise before God, or we in our prayers at night have this nagging feeling that we constantly have, I need to stop doing this, I really need to stop doing this, I need to start doing this, and we say, I'm going to do it tomorrow. God willing, that would be true, but often it's not. Often it's just a good intention, but it's not the yes that the Mother of God was able to give. The Orthodox Church, well, really, God works paradoxically so many ways, things that we don't think should be. The ways of this world, as we see in the time of Christ, and the people that came to him right and left were desiring a worldly leader with power who would take over these Romans and make things the way they wanted them to be, but that's not the way it was. We would expect him to come in amazing glory. God being, being made flesh is, of course, of course, a stumbling block for the Jews and foolishness to the Greeks. The cross is, but the same message is foolishness to the Greeks because it makes no sense that God is becoming a little child, that God is becoming man, and bearing everything that we have. Couldn't he have just done something amazing, more powerful, and power, with the power of his hand and word, make everything happen? Well, perhaps he could have, but it's not the way that God works. God came in the most profound humility to this very young woman, a virgin, who could not find anywhere to even give birth, had to find a cave, had to find a difficult place. And she was living in a world, let's face it, where the Jews were not looked favorably upon. They were derided people. They were against the wall, their religion with the Romans. Anybody who got sent to that area, the governor got sent there for Pontius Pilate. This was not a, a posh job. He did not want this job. Nobody wanted to go deal with the Jews and the people in Israel. This was an outpost at this point. It had nothing to do with it. But that's how God works. Because that is the time that God chose to reveal himself unto men. In the, perhaps one of the worst periods of the people of Israel. One of the worst. There have been other bad periods. But 
This was a very bad one. That was the time that was right for our salvation, and that's when he chose to come. But think about it. He came to Moses in a bush when he was going about his business, chasing his livestock. He came to Elijah in a still small wind. He comes throughout history in this way, in humility. He comes to the martyrs in the greatest, greatest bits of despair and pain. He doesn't always come in amazing ways that we think he should. He works in really contradiction to what we believe and what we think. He comes in the cancer wars, he comes in the prisons, he comes in our greatest amounts of pain. He comes while we are sinners, and the deepest part of our sin, as he comes to our patron who we'll read about this week, he comes and brings her to repentance when she probably couldn't have gone any more far down into sin than she had. That's when he comes. So we shouldn't wait for the time when we think we're ready for God to come. I've made that big change. Now God will come. It's not based on what we do. Yes, we do a lot of things. We should do a lot of things. You hear that about tomorrow, the ladder of divine ascent. There are many things we should do, but this is not how we attain salvation. We do those things because we are trying to open our hearts up to God, to show God that we do love Him, to make our yes, yes. To be like the mother of God, to be able to say, may it be according to thy word, not just to simply keep going along and think God's going to just come to me when I don't really want God. God does want to see that we love him. God does want to see that way of life that leads to him. That's when he works in us. That's when he changes us. Yes, he comes to us while we're sinners, but that's the point when he gives us a decision to make. I'm coming to you. And we should say, how, how can this be? Look at me, I'm wretched. But yet, he does come, and he says, now, take up your cross and follow me. Are we willing to say yes at that moment? Our life is very short. It ends before we know it. All, well, most of us in this room now have already seen years pass by very quickly, and where did they go? The teenage years are gone, the 20s are gone, the 30s are gone, the 40s are gone, and on and on and on and on. But yet we haven't made that move yet, that unconditional yes to move toward God. It's worth it to make that move. Today, with the announcement of the gospel, it's worth it to make it because life is gone and then there's eternity, which makes this look like nothing. So we make our decision. We make our decision for Christ. Does the Holy Spirit overshadow us? Or do we continue to call it into question? I was reading in Peter last night, which should make our election, our calling sure, to make sure, with diligence to make it sure. And that's what the Mother of God does. Of course, being quite different than us, because she was subject to sin, but without it. She chose not to make that decision for sin at any moment in her life. For that reason, we call her the Panagia, the All-Holy. For that reason, the Russian elders called her the Queen of Heaven frequently and called upon her and called upon her because she loves us so much because she loved her son more than anyone else. And she shows us the virtues of humility, but also she shows us that great virtue of a decis decisiveness for God and being able to say, May it be unto me according to thy word. And may, for us today, with the powers of the Most Holy Theotokos, may we be able to say, from this day, from this hour, from this minute, Lord, may it be unto me according to thy word. Amen.